a high power 100 watt LED lamp and I'm going to show you this illuminated now I've got it plugged into the uh, Cliff Quick Test and when I power it on I want to warn you in advance because it's very high intensity and it's not smooth it's going to be very flickery so there's going to be some fl flickering and strobing starting now Okay, now that that has been proven and you've all been dazzled with its flickeriness, let's unplug that. Let's get the quick, quick test out of the way to make some space here because this is actually quite a big device. So it's quite unusual. The, this is the listing for it uh, and it's described as a 100 watt, which it is at the beginning, 108 LED to be more accurate. Uh, although it's got 108 actual LED chips, well not chips, LED packages. Each one actually contains two chips, so technically speaking it's 216 LED. High power floodlight, mm-hmm. Iodine tungsten, not sure why it says that. Waterproof, it's definitely not waterproof. IP66, it's definitely not that either. Lamp AC220 volts, and you get the, you get different versions. You get them, I believe you get these 110 volt, and also for the sort of generic, ge generic 220, 240, which this one is. The price here is nine dollars seventeen American dollars. I have to say that I paid about eight dollars for this. I'm pretty sure. So this is obviously doing that automatic yo-yo price system, depending on demand. Intended application? I'll make a wild guess. It's hydroponics. Uh, I've left the blue film in this just because otherwise it would get very shiny and dazzly. There's blue film in the back as well, and a sort of hanging point. I'm guessing. You could use a hook in that, although the flex would probably pull it down. So a, maybe a a bolt through that uh, and onto a sort of frame might work. I'm really not sure what this is, if this is intended maybe to replace a discharge lamp and a floodlight or, or something. I'm not really sure. I will say that it does need uh, it does need thermally cooled because uh, it uh, it works okay in open air, but if you had it in a fixture, it could get quite hot. So let's take a look at the circuitry starting at uh, this end. The supply comes in and there is a pop rivet holding the earth wire onto the uh, metal frame, the aluminium housing. And it's got this rubber grommet here, but the rubber grommet has been, they've splunged some silicon, they've splunged silicon over the whole thing. But they've splunged it and then it's obviously just bounced up again because it's not really fully trapped down into that. It's almost as if the grommet's just a bit too small for the hole. So it is grounded and it's the first thing that's on here is a metal oxide varistor. First time I've seen them mount one, the natural surface mount one like this, as opposed to just the standard blue one just tacked onto a couple of leads. They've got a couple of uh, resistors here, presumably acting as fuses. They're 2.2 ohm. A bridge rect for a little uh, a 470k uh, resistor and a, a little capacitor here, 10, 10 nanofarad I think it was. And then a large series array of LEDs. At the other end, it's got this interesting label. It says, warning, danger, electricity. And that possibly is a good thing to warn about because this is just a, a sort of a gel silicon covering over this. You could probably touch contacts in this. I'm not going to try that out while it powers on. It also says, danger, hot caution. Yes, it does get very hot. And then rather inexplicably, it just says, and the, and then there's nothing nothing beyond saying and the. So let's uh, zoom back out again. The schematic, because I have reverse engineered this, is fairly typical for this type of thing, this type of arrangement. So we've got the incoming supply and the neutral initially goes over through that uh, 2.2 ohm resistor here. Then the metal oxide varistor across, is across the supply. This is using linear current regulators, so it wants to get rid of any sharp transient. If the mains has a very sharp transient on it, that will equate through this type of circuitry to a very sharp current pulse that could damage the MOSFETs in these uh, current regulators. So they've used the metal oxide varistor to try and just basically shunt them down, cut them down. It, then it's got a 2.2 ohm resistor. Uh, again, that's uh, uh, this one leading to a bridge rect far, quite a big chunky bridge rect far. And then on the other side of that, just two little components down here, the 10 nanofarad capacitor and a 470k resistor. I'm guessing the 470k resistor might just be to stop it ghosting if there's slight current leakage, as some LEDs do, not really sure.
If you wanted to apply smoothing, because some of the schematics for this show, uh, electrolytic capacitors, this is where you'd want to apply it. If you wanted, uh, some of them show things like 10 meg fired, 450 volt capacitors. This capacitor, incidentally, uh, it measures at 10 nanofarad. It does have peak uh, UK mains, theoretically, across it, which is quite a high voltage, about 350 volts. It seems a really tiny capacitor for that. Then the circuit dis divides, and I'm going to try drawing on this. I don't think I'll be able to draw on on this because this is silicon and it doesn't generally take Sharpie too well. No, it's just beading up, so I can't. Right, okay. Anyway, that slightly dotted outline I've put around that is an arrangement of six LEDs with uh, each of these LED packages. There's two in series uh, plus sort of, uh, three in parallel. And it's got, on each side, it's got nine of these arrangements. So I've drawn two of them here and one at the bottom, just because I ran out of space. And they are wired, so each of these is in parallel, then the, they're wired uh, one clump of six, then another clump of six, and it goes all the way down. And then the current regulation is actually looped up the middle of this. So you basically, uh, the polarity, I think this is the negative side, runs down through all these LEDs. Then it goes up a little bus bar here, and every single one of these current regulator chips is in parallel. So then it comes down another little bus bar, and then it runs back through these LEDs in multiples of six each time, up to the other end, up to the positive connection. And that's quite common, again, that they use these chips in multiples in parallel. So these are actually ZX9101HE. And there is another place on the circuit board for another component, RD, resistor drain or something, I'm not sure. But uh, the RS is the resistor sense, and, uh, and I reckon because this is going to a pin that doesn't appear to be used on this chip, I'm guessing they've just allowed for various manufacturers use sort of common pin layouts because they've manufactured their chip to be a drop-in replacement for other manufacturers' chips just to try and sell their version cheaper or something like that. Other things worth a note, this little capacitor here uh, equates to these two capacitors they've got across here that are just across these. And again, they'll be to protect the chips. Just in case there is a current spike gets through, this will act as a little reservoir. It'll buffer that to actually try and take the top off that spike. Um, and that's fundamentally it. The power comes in, gets rectified to DC, uh, goes through the LEDs, current regulated by these little chips which are acting. They've got a sense resistor on them which senses the current flowing through them and regulates it uh, to uh, you use that resistor to set the current that's going through these. I reckon they're passing around about, what was my notes, what was my notes, roughly 50 milliamps each. Uh, there's eight of them in parallel and uh, they just regulate a current like a resistor but electronically active. They also have the facility to throttle the current themselves if they get too hot and they are getting very hot as I shall show you. So I ran this for a while and the temperature of those chips went up to 160 degrees Celsius when this was operating in open air in a room that was at an ambient temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the chips are the bit that gets hottest. The LEDs don't get quite as hot and uh, the current initially through this started at 410 milliamps, uh, which equated to about 95 watts. Then, after it had been on for a while, it stabilised at 317 milliamps, which equates to 71 watts, once it had reached sort of equilibrium temperature. But if you were operating this light in a very hot area, then it would throttle it further. It, it would, it, if you put it in an enclosure, it would start up at the full whack of 100 watts, but then it would rapidly fall down as it heated up inside, and these chips have reached that equilibrium point that they were, uh, that they'd throttled the current down to the point that they didn't heat up any further than that level, and it would just basically wave around about that point. And this gets hot enough, you can actually feel the heat radiating off it. Just think of it as a 100 watt light bulb, but you know, that's the sort of heat we're talking about here off this, which I'm guessing, you know, this uh, thin aluminium might not be ideal for that. I would recommend peeling this uh, off. There might be the temptation to leave it in the back to protect it. But um, I think there's the risk there that if it bubbled up in any way with the heat, then that would form little thermal air 
sort of insulation pocket, so it would be a good idea to peel this off. There's the grommet coming through it. It's not a grommet as such, it's just a little sleeve. Uh, and it's not really stuck in, so uh, it just drops out again. But it's nice that it is grounded, earthed. That's, uh, that's an improvement. Not sure how long it will last. Those LEDs do run at high temperatures, but then modern LEDs do run at high temperatures. Um, if you put the capacitor across, there's a chance that it's going to make everything run just a little bit hotter too, because that will act as a buffer for the rectified uh, AC and it will probably go up to a nice steady 350 volts DC. At the moment it's uh, riding, well you saw the flicker, it's riding the sine wave a bit, uh, each half wave of that sine wave, and uh, that does result in a higher flicker, but uh, the consequence of putting the electrolytic capacitor in is that it will reduce the flicker, but it will increase the thermal dissipation, and therefore it will probably throttle itself down even further. So yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure the application it's intended for, Let's uh, see how easy this uh, film is to peel off. And if I could have just peeled it off in the first place. No, it's it's super shiny now, yeah. Probably better left that on for the video. But um, it's interesting. It, it, it really is. I wonder... I'm wondering what application... It, it almost looks like it's designed to hook into something, to clip in. And maybe it is. Maybe it is designed for uh, use as LED floodlights. So I don't know how long it will last. It's certainly, at least the heat has spread over a large area. Um, also worth mentioning that because they've got that silicon goo over it, uh, they've poured it over and uh, it's formed that sort of irregular layer over it. You can't guarantee, I wouldn't ever recommend holding on to this and touching anything inside while the power is on. You'd have to treat this as all being live at mains voltage, particularly if you're holding on to grounded metal because that just makes things so much worse. But it is a very interesting light. 